What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to discuss uh, the idea of working with billion row tables in general. And this is a, a very, very interesting point because as you design a system, it will force you to ask a question, your table design, your document design, whatever uh, flavor of a database you use, how do you anticipate these table to grow in the future after one, three, four years? Do you anticipate these tables to grow so large that they're gonna reach the billion uh, level? So in this video, I wanna kind of discuss how do we work with such huge volume of data, right? Because there are many ways of tackling this problem. And I wanna just discuss some of them. I have three concepts here to discuss. Obviously guys, if I missed anything, let me know in the comment section below. Before we jump into the video, guys, this video was uh, basically inspired from my comment section, specifically with Vinny. He's a great database engineer, and he always finds uh, mistakes and, and things that I say wrong, and, and, and obviously has great feedback in general on my videos. So I like uh, this is just a shout out for him. So it was spawned as a discussion on my Twitter system design video when I came up with, with this arbitrary design to, for the fellow feature, which I'm gonna reference the video right here. Go check it out. And so as a result, that design um, generated a table which is very, very huge, right? So what I basically did is I have this following feature, right? So I have this person following this person. So I put the whole thing in one table and add, added two rows with their IDs. So this person following this table. And, and I said in the video, this is gonna be a huge table. So what do we do? And uh, we had a discussion back and forth of uh, how, what do we do with these kind of situation, which inspired me to actually make a video to discuss what do we do? What do people do today? If you have a large table, how about we discuss it? So I have three basically concepts. The first one is brute forcing your way to, to process the table or work with the table. So if you're trying to find a row inside this table, right? What you can do without the concept of indexing, without the concept of anything, brute force your way, which is do multi-threading, do multi-processing, and chunk the table into multiple uh, segments and search in parallel, right? That's how basically um, big data essentially and, and concurrent Hadoop works, right? So it's like map and reduce the subset of the table into smaller concepts so you can run in parallel and brute force your way and, and find what you're looking for what, uh, and, and try to do the process yourself, right? So that's the idea. Can I break this table into uh, hundreds of pieces and, and search these spaces in parallel concurrently, throwing this problem on, on, uh, on a hundred uh, machine cluster? That will work. Sometimes that's why I want to discuss the second point, which is can I avoid processing the entire table? Can I avoid processing the entire table and instead process subset of this table only? How do I do that? The, the best best approach is use indexing, right? Because that's what we do. If we index a column on a table, then you essentially create a structure on the desk that will basically, it's a B, B tree or LSM tree that will help you reduce the subset on what you're searching. So and instead of searching the entire table for what you want, right? You search only a small subset, which is the index. And that even it's, it's on, it, it's a scan to find what you want. And then you, by finding that, you you kind of narrow what you were looking for. It's like a binder in, in, in the secretary's office, right? Where you have, okay, there is a book and there is the letter A. And any contract that starts with A is, is this. Any contract that starts with B is this. Any contract that starts with C is this. So you see it in color-coded, right? So if, you, if your contract is, I don't know, 
company is called Zebra. So you only immediately go to the Z color and then you start searching, right? So you minimize what you're searching for. However, that's indexing. So let's search with a smaller set, right? So instead of having the whole table, let's reduce the set, right? So instead of working with a billion rows, maybe we're working with few millions in this case, right? Can I even go and reduce that set even more? That's where database people do tricks like partitioning. So partitioning is on disk by this huge table is now broken into, and I'm talking about here, uh, essentially horizontal partitioning, not vertical partitioning, right? So horizontal partitioning means like slice the table in half almost, like in the middle. And then you say, okay, rows from this to this is, is on this location on desk, right? And then rows from this range to this range and this location is different than indexing. So the whole thing is still indexed, but we're literally partitioning in, uh, the table into multiple parts. So now, how do I know which partition to search for? You need another concept that tells you which partition to hit. And if you're lucky, you might search one partition only or couple. And this is called the partition key. So you always partition on a key. Very similar to indexing, except the indexing works on the whole table. Partitioning works also on the whole table, but but it, it will partitioning will break down the table into smaller and smaller pieces. And now you can you you will have different indexes per partition, right? And usually the database take care of my God. What the fuck was that? Usually the database take care of all that stuff for you. So it's almost transparent. Working with indexes was working with, with partition is transparent from you as a client who queries this table. So it's incredibly fast, right? So if you know where to search for, you can hit the right partition and only hoping that you the partition that you're searching for is in that. And indexing also make that even smaller set. So that's pretty cool, right? And that's still where, so we have one database still, we have uh, one machine and we broken this into multiple partitions and now I can search exactly what I want to. Now you can distribute that even further across multiple hosts by doing sharding, right? So, so similarly to the concept of partition, you can still have partitioning and also add the idea of sharding on top of that, which adds a little bit of complexity to your system. But now you put the first 100,000 customers in one database and you put the second 100,000 in one database and they don't talk to each other. And here's now the problem of transactions, right? Because if they are two different databases, you just reduce the size of the table, obviously, but now you complicated the client because the client is now should be aware of the shards. Like, okay, I am searching for customer number 500. Which shard should I hit? Oh, you hit shard one because that's where it is, right? And now going down deep into that shard, there are partitions of that table and going down into each partition, there are indexes, right? Or index. And now you just you basically narrowed the billion row into maybe a few thousand or a few hundred thousand rows, which is pretty good. So that's the idea of what we do, right? Shard, partition, and then index, and then find the row exactly what we're looking for. So that's the idea of, of, of limiting what we want to work with. And the final thing is, and, and, and uh, as I started thinking about it, it's like, okay, Maybe we can avoid all this together. Why do you have a billion row table to begin with? So that's on the database designer, which was me in that case, right? So, like, okay, maybe it's not a good idea to have a table so large. Can we solve this problem so that I don't need to have a billion row table? And in case of the, of the, of the Twitter following example, we might actually be able to. I still didn't complete the thought yet, but if you have like a profile table, okay, okay, this is my ID, this is my name, this is my picture. 
we can add a field called followers count it's an integer we'll come to that now there is another field now most relational databases support json we can put a json there or a list field and add your followers in your profile so now we don't have a relational table that tells you oh this guy is following this guy this guy is following this gal now we have one profile and if you want to get your followers then you go to your profile and fetch the row and and pull that information and that's you have all the profile and and every time someone follows you or some you follow someone now the hit is on the right level if i want to write hey someone just followed me i need to update those two columns i need to update the count and everything to that I didn't have this problem in the first design, but the first design wouldn't scale as better as this, in my opinion, right? You can, now we, we start worrying about the right throughput, but I don't wanna go through that stuff, right? We can do message queues where we can, okay, let's write it, asynchronously update that. Yeah, there will be a little bit delay, who cares? It's a follower count, anyway. We're gonna pick the queue and then slowly just update these things so we have many ways to solve a problem so instead of to summarize the whole video instead of working with the whole billion table row try first concurrently process it processing it maybe i'll flip that a little bit maybe try to avoid having a billion row that's the first thing i i kind of said it last right the second one if you can't avoid it then can you index it of your obviously what field to index them can you partition it right on the same table on the same disk right can you partition your table so that they are smaller sizes and if if you can partition and you can index can you even if do you really need to shard it so that if it's even smaller and smaller smaller pieces on multiple hosts right because if that host dies then that's a problem right so you you even partition it on on horizontally essentially on multiple databases right shards that will create complexity which i try to avoid i talked about that a little bit and then finally if you can't do any of that stuff just do do map reduce do just run parallel processing and try to process run your work so that you process the billion row concurrently with a massive army of machines if possible if your database transactional then that's kind of pointless because the moment you start the army searching or, or working with your huge table partitioned, right, spliced, then it will go out of there the moment you start because people are start editing, right? People are changing all the time. All right, guys, I'm not going to make the video more than that, but I just wanted to discuss this point. It is very interesting. What did I miss, guys? What do you think? What other ideas do you have I'm gonna I love to hear them obviously guys everything I say here can be debated can be discussed that's what is the beauty of of this channel we discuss we learn from each other all the time and then we grow this way thank you so much love you gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye